Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show episode. What are we, 58, Eamon? Yeah, we 58. are. 58. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video producer here for some local promotions, in, uh, international wrestling cartel, RWA, all kinds of stuff at uh, PittsburghWrestling.com. And with me is my compatriot from San Antonio, Texas. He's the ringside commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling. He's Eamon Payton at Eamon 2, please. Yes, indeed. It's a, 58 episodes is crazy, so it's 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 really crazy how I far think, we've still been doing this. I think we're about how old Sting is. So, about. You know, so we're WrestleMania age. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is the show where we talk about indie wrestling and uh, bring on some people from our walks of life in uh, down in Texas, Pittsburgh, and, and, and all over the place uh, and try to bring them together and have some conversations about independent pro wrestling because we dig it so much that we're doing stuff with it obviously um so you can check us out we're uh, of course at wrestling mayhem show.com you can find out about this and a whole bunch of other shows going on um talking about all different kinds of pro wrestling and uh you can also uh please check out our friends at uh, basic sickness.com as well for the intro and outro music uh for free uh over the pittsburgh area of course uh as well music videos all kinds of stuff and you can drop us a line to good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412-206-WMSO is the hotline. And, of course, you can join us here every Tuesday night at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com and join us in the chat room. So with us tonight, um, he's a guy that's been popping up, making some noise here in the International Wrestling Cartel in the Pittsburgh area. He's, excuse the noise, he's got a dog he's dealing with. So <laughs> You know it's damn puppies. He's uh, the VIP Joe Rosa. How you doing tonight, sir? Doing well, Sorgatron, my man. How are you? All right, all right. Thank you for uh, joining us here uh, this late hour here. But uh, you're the VIP. You're you're used to staying up late, right? All hours, 24-7. You know me. <laughs> I want to get in a little bit about that uh, kind of VIP lifestyle as uh, we've been applying it to wrestling at the IWC lately. But in the meantime, uh, we'd like to kind of start off and get a little bit of roots here. Uh, of course, you're in independent wrestling. Uh, you had to been a wrestling fan first to get this far, right? Uh, so we like to kind of ask, what is your kind of first memory? What's the first thing that really kind of uh, hooked you into pro wrestling? First memory was my mother, believe it or not, was a huge wrestling fan. And we went, I was born and raised just outside of Cleveland, Ohio, East mm-hmm. Cleveland. And we went to the Cleveland Coliseum and we saw the Macho Man Randy Savage in a big blue steel cage. And nice. it was the first live event I ever saw. And I don't even remember anything about it. I was probably eight years old, maybe younger. I just remember it being the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I started watching wrestling ever since. And besides maybe a brief period here and there of like, I remember the ultimate warrior getting a curse casted upon him by Papa Shango. And I swore I'd never watch <laughs> wrestling again, but it was too good for me to stay away from. So I've been watching it ever since. That was a scary time. I remember being uh, a little frightened myself in that era. When he threw up, I thought I was going to die. I thought it was the worst thing I'd ever seen. Kind of maybe related. How did you feel about the uh, the snake pick scene when Jake Roberts locked uh, Warrior in the in that room of snakes? I had nightmares for four months. <laughs> I still hate snakes. Um, <laughs> it was it was horrible. <laughs> um, hey, yeah, they, they they did some rough stuff around that era. It was weird considering how kitty they got for a bit, right? But, yeah, they started pushing the envelope a little bit, but. At that time, man, to see somebody throwing up was the grossest thing I'd ever seen. And Warrior was just like, blah, blah, blah. it was, it was <laughs> horrific. And I didn't watch wrestling for a few years after that. <laughs> so, so after being traumatized, how did you come back around to the point where you said, I want to do this. I want to get in the ring and be a pro wrestler. Oh, it's kind of cliche. Um, I thought Michaels was awesome. I thought Shawn Michaels was the coolest thing ever. Besides the obvious what seemed a bit homosexual at the time i thought it was just the coolest gimmick ever and i was a huge savage fan and he was still around and cooking at that time and even though when i was i was probably 16 and 
the whole attitude era was kicking off and it wasn't the coolest thing to be a wrestling fan, but I was, I was obsessed when, when Michaels really got hot and then obviously they went into the whole stone cold stuff. So I thought it was great. Tremendous, tremendous. Um, and I do understand, um, you know, we were talking a little bit beforehand. I, I, I saw that you were with Ohio Valley Wrestling. And, of course, most know that of, as uh, being the former WWE uh, developmental for many, many years. Now, you were actually there for a, a quite different time, right? Yeah, man. I was there for two years uh, right when TNA signed on with OVW. Mm-hmm. So Rip Rogers was the reason I went. I, uh I don't know if you know Ryan Nemeth, Riley Pierce at the time, but I spoke with him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, his brother, Nick, Dolph Ziggler. Um, so I had a little bit of an in there, and I, I talked to Rip, and he said, come on down. And the whole point was to go there and train with him. So the goal wasn't TNA. The goal wasn't WWE. The goal was to train with Rip and get as much experience as I could. But, yeah, I mean, TNA was – partner with them at the time and it was a totally different ball game than when wwe was in town mm-hmm. so you you kind of went in were you early in your training part or you were uh, i guess you were probably a, a few matches in at this point right uh literally i learned how to bump in cleveland i moved into iwc for about a year mm-hmm. i was so injury prone at that time i actually had uh, two shoulder surgeries, oh, and geez. after I got healthy and was reconstructed, I packed up and I moved and I went to OBW because I needed to learn how to actually work instead of just knowing how to bump. Mm-hmm. You know, excellent, excellent. What, what, what do you see about the experience there? Like, did, did it seem like they? Um, I don't know. Was there a lot of legacy from the WWE days, or was it mostly kind of TNA? I guess influenced. Um. It was it was extremely TNA influenced, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie about that. But the trainer, the head trainer, the advanced trainer is Rip, and he is as old school as it gets, and everything's WWE and, and traditional to him. So his influence was a lot the same, but TNA had control of everything. If mm-hmm. that makes sense, right? Right. Interesting. Interesting. Um, cool. And then of course you came back here, um, and, 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 and some really interesting stuff, uh, happened with you with IWC. Um, um, most interesting, uh, this is the concept of the VIP lounge. And this is something I haven't seen in indie wrestling much. I mean, you know, we, we talk about the shows on here and they seem very straightforward, a bunch of matches right now. Oh yeah. You came in kind of as I don't want to call it a side show, but it was literally a side show, uh, something called the VIP Lounge, where uh, you can tell us a little bit about that concept um, and, and kind of how that formed. Yeah, man. The idea is, I mean, this is pro wrestling, dude. It's not just what's in the ring that matters. Like, yeah. it's, it's about a character. It's about, I, I hate the word, it's about a gimmick, but it's about, you know, who you are. It's your personality. It's the entertainment you show. So, this all started in OBW actually with uh, the creative there. And we thought, you know, give me a group of guys and the whole VIP lifestyle was kind of what I was living at the time. So the gimmick was real easy for me to play. You know, when I moved there, it was all late nights partying and doing whatever we could to just have a good time and, and wrestle and, and live the life. So when I came back to IWC, instead of just hopping in the ring and saying, oh, here's another wrestler, what's the point in that? We uh, had the idea to just start this lounge where there's going to be me making some noise from the side while the regular show is obviously going on. And it was a way to get attention and a way to establish who I was without having, actually having to do anything physical. And obviously, people like that gimmick. People love to hate that gimmick. People can relate to that gimmick. People want to be that gimmick. There's all kinds of ways that I could connect with the crowd and, and coming in as a heel, it, it was real easy to be a loud mouth piece of shit for a better term, <laughs> to be an asshole from the sideline instead of just some guy in tights in the ring. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, and, and it was actually something like, like fans could actually pay. Like you actually made it a VIP for the fans too. Yeah, man. We offered them forty dollars seats. I brought them beverages, we'll say, just some cold beverages, and uh, we had some lady companionship, and we had front row seats, and 
if they wanted to watch some matches, they could, or they could just hang out with me and, and the ladies the whole time and have a good time and, and drink their drinks and do what we do. And we actually have a shot here uh, coming up for in a moment here with the, uh, the, this, this plush, plush couch you guys got to hang out with. And you guys were located right <laughs> by the entrance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which i'm sure plush plush couch you know um you know nothing but, bad ever happened on that couch no no nothing nothing uh but it was a it was a really cool concept it's something a little bit different uh that, that I, like i say i haven't seen on the indies uh before and, and something we got to play with a little bit too uh yeah great there's no reason for that not to have happened yet you know what oh, i mean yeah. like yeah. wrestling's been around too long you need to have Something besides just in the ring. you got to have something going on, man. I mean, MVP did that whole thing with WWE, and I hate to say it was kind of a ripoff of that, but obviously I, people brought that up. But that's the idea. It's a, it's a way to grab attention. Mm-hmm. Spotlight should be on me anyway, so that's the way it belongs. <laughs> Certainly. And, of course, that rolled into uh, the Faces of Change, which you, know, you could call kind of a, a S.H.I.E.L.D.-esque group uh, where the – you teamed up with a, a bunch of uh, uh, new guys, uh, debuting trainees with IWC, uh, with that against uh, some veterans in the uh, uh, the, uh, the founding fathers, um, right? Um, which led to some uh, really, really interesting brawls all over the place uh, over the months here. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and working with some of the the, the newer talent down there? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Anytime you bring guys in that are brand new, you got your work cut out for you. Oh, yeah. These kids, they were wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, looked good, <laughs> were ready to, to, to jump into the fold. So we thought of the idea, you know, I, I wanted to go after Vegas for years just because, you know, he's, he's one of the big dogs in the yard. So we thought that, like, you know, let's gather my guys together and really do this and, and – we figured it was a good way to introduce some new guys because it can't be the same old stuff over and over and over again. It doesn't matter how many times you re-debut people, it gets old. So right. we wanted to introduce some new people. We wanted them to be with me because even though I had been gone for a couple of years, there's there's a little bit of credibility there. At least they see my face on the Indies, you know. There's no superstar status, but at least I got the personality to bring out everybody else. And I could certainly play that heel role very well. Um, there were a lot of brawls. Brawls are an easy way to, to cover up some things when you need to. And, uh, it, it got the point across, you know, now hindsight 2020 and, and it might not have been the greatest idea. You know, we all learn things from it. It's, it's obviously hard when you got new guys playing uh, an important kind of role, but I think they did well and, and it got my point across and you know, I think we accomplished what we needed to. Awesome, awesome, um, and of course, I, this this led to speaking of work with new guys. I, I understand you are starting with the uh, IWC Iron City Wrestling Academy here coming up. Uh, yeah, as, man. As a trainer, uh, go ahead. Oh, as a trainer, I'm sorry, I wanted to clarify. Um, so, I, there's a new class coming up, and uh, you're going to be starting uh, to kick that off here pretty soon. Absolutely, uh, I enjoyed working with the guys who were my faces of change. So. The the first thing I said was, you know, there's no trainer WWE experience status with me. So it's just like ind- independence anywhere. Nowadays, there's a school on every corner and you can get into the business by buying a pair of boots at high spots and, mm-hmm. and jumping in a ring and calling yourself a wrestler. But at least with me and the other trainers there, we will teach what has been directly taught to us. The two years I had at OVW were absolutely invaluable experience just in and out of the ring with all aspects of the business so for laying down a foundation for kids coming in i can definitely help out and i was more than willing to it's it's always a good opportunity for me to to get in the ring more and to to stay around the business because it's it's something i love to do more than anything else so Mm -hmm. that's why we're doing that awesome we had actually a question from the chat room for wheels and i don't know if you uh, have the kind of prospects lined up, but uh, he, he's asking, uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, the future students? You know, are they anybody promising coming out of there? It looks like um, we got a couple big guys, and in the, in the, there's a class going on right now, and the class is about to start up. We got six guys mm-hmm. in this one. Uh, we do have a female in the, in the other class that's finishing up that you know could work 
there's always that possibility. And we got some, we got six brand new wide eyed people coming in. Um, honestly, you never know what you're going to get when you start with brand new guys, the guys that you think are going to not work out sometimes have the best personalities and can do things in the ring that you didn't think they could do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the most athletic guys, the ones that can't connect at all and can't put it together. So when you start a class, you just start building basics and fundamentals and you see people start to break out of their, their shells and their comfort zone and you just hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good question. You mentioned the female wrestlers uh, being involved in these classes. Uh, we actually had a pretty uh, good conversation over on the other uh, main wrestling ma'am show uh, about women's wrestling and kind of their place on the main show with WWE Raw and versus NXT and stuff like that. And, and I've spoken to uh, a few points about women wrestling in the area and how much we do get, you know, and it doesn't seem like it's that much. Uh, what What's your kind of uh, uh, thoughts on its spot kind of like on the show, maybe for IWC in the future or just kind of in general in, in indie wrestling? Uh, do you see anything promising coming out of the area for that? I think you would be a fool to say that women's wrestling does not belong somewhere on the card. Mm -hmm. It is a specific niche for people, the guys, girls, it can relate to multiple people, whether it's just a match or just a segment, it is something that you can utilize mm -hmm. in the WWE right now. You know, obviously I'm a Mark. I watch everything. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me that there's a lot of guys out there that watch like, that like watching Nikki Bella in the ring, shaking her <laughs> ass and she's getting more athletic. You can't tell me that on the Indies, you don't have some of these fans that enjoy watching the girls up close and personal. So for IWC, I am pushing for it. There should be at least a couple talented girls that get to show off in the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, if not every single show, every other show, there's got to be some kind of a niche there. It's, I think it should be done. Excellent. Awesome. Um, well, you kind of answered one of my questions, one of my regular questions we've kind of started working in here about uh, what are you watching? You say you watch a little bit of everything, but what's uh, what's kind of got you most excited these days? Uh, I'm traditional through and through, man. I watch the WWE. Um, that's how I was trained. That's how I wrestle. That's how I think. That's how my psychology works. Right. I do not. I, I try and you know, I DVR everything. So I'll watch the Ring of Honor stuff. Mm -hmm. I will watch the TNA stuff, even though they switch channels now. I'll still watch it and and see what they're doing because I'm a I'm I'm a psychology guy, man. I like the story. I like there being a good story from start to finish, the whole show, each match. But to say to pick a product, it's it's, it's still WWE for me. Mm -hmm. I think obviously it's not as good as it used to be, but that's just because wrestling is in a certain stage right now, and it's got its ups and downs, but. I'm a traditional guy, man. That's where I stand. Awesome. You, you mentioned psychology. Anybody, uh, anybody out there that's really kind of, uh, you know, getting you excited about what they're doing in the ring these days? Are we talking WWE? Uh, across the board. Let's see. Uh, starting from the WWE. God, man, things have changed so much. I, I got to tell you, you know, I'm not like super pumped about anything when it comes to the big show. Mm -hmm. um, I try to get into Bray Wyatt's character, but, you know, you can only do so many promos and stuff. They got to get this guy rolling, got to build some real star power. Of course, we can all be critics and say, oh, they should do this. They should do that. We don't know what the hell we're talking about. But um, I think Seth Rollins is the most athletic dude in the world. So I enjoy watching him wrestle. Um I like how they are really giving him some time and giving him that microphone and letting him do his thing. So, um, the main roster though, man, I don't know. I, honestly, the girls have been intriguing to me. I think the girls have come a long way. I mean, they're still pretty girls who are learning how to wrestle, but they've come a long way in the past five, 10 years than just being supermodels. They can do some shit in there now, man. Awesome. Awesome. Um, the other question we like to ask here, you've been around for a few years here, uh, a few different places. Uh, what's the best and the worst thing about working on the Indies? Ooh, that's your money question, huh? Yep, yep, yep. yep. 
Oh God! It's either uh, the best, best question. Of- it's either the best <laughs> question or the stupidest question from week to week. So, <laughs> no, man, that that should be. I mean, obviously, that's the money question. That should be the best question from week to week. If you got a real indie wrestler, a super indie wrestler who's traveling and, and paying his dues and doing his time, you should get a good answer out of this. So, I mean, the best thing is, is that you got a bunch of guys who are like minded guys and girls who who share a passion and who want to perform and put on a good show and you know if you keep a good attitude and everything the locker room and the ring and the, and the crowd and everything could be a really good place to be um you can really build some camaraderie you can you can actually make some friends believe it or not and you can you're going to make a lot of memories that, that are going to stick with you uh the bad side of of independence and the wwe being backstage there and tna being backstage there um there's a couple things. One is obviously politically, you're looking at a different atmosphere, man. You're looking at a beast that you've got to be willing to conquer at all costs. You, you can't, you can't be a pussy and be in this business. If I'm allowed to say that on your show, that's I fine. Do apologize for swearing. So one a few times today, but that's how I roll. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you gotta be headstrong, man. You gotta be self-confident and you gotta be secure. You're going to deal with a bunch of bullshit trying to get to the top or trying to get to where you want to be. And you're going to deal with a lot of people who are going to try and bring you down and you're going to find those people who are going to want to support you. You just got to, you just got to keep pushing through and stick with the right group of people. Um, there's also, there's this huge sense of entitlement going around, especially now, because like I said, anybody can buy a pair of boots and call themselves a wrestler. So a lot of guys think that, just because they trained for maybe a year or for six months that they're entitled to these matches or they're entitled to a spot or they're entitled to anything. And truth be told, you know, nobody is entitled to anything. Nobody deserves anything. Nobody belongs anywhere. You should have to prove every single inch, every single step that you take. And I've, I've seen just backstage a lot of stuff that shouldn't be happening and we all make mistakes. We've all been there. I've done a lot of stupid shit in my time and I've paid my dues and been put in my place for it. Uh, but we just got to get everybody back to the respect level. We gotta get everybody on the same page that you all work as one to, to make this product better. Y'all work as one to make it a, a, a business. So if we can get guys that are, more like-minded in that sense, the Indies would be a lot better off, man. Nice. Promoters, too. Jeez. How do you want to get into promoters? We'll save that for another show. <laughs> we have a whole show. We have a whole show on promoter uh, roundtable here. As we Jesus <laughs> Christ. I would like to knock out so many promoters I've met in my time. Oh, wow. Quote promoters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I just have a small niche of guys that I work with here in the area, and that's basically it. From from even the stories I've heard and a little bits of kind of odd promoters I've done had dealings with, I just so glad I don't have to. You know, <laughs> dude, just stick with the guys that that you're comfortable with and know yeah. what they're doing because there's so many guys out there who will cut every corner in the book just to get a show on and right. make twenty bucks that night instead of making any real money and building any real talent or real storylines or anything. Right, right, exactly. Um, and I see that from the production side. It's like, well, no, if you want to do it right. And I'm cutting you slack with this number, and and the conversations get really weird after that sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's like, understandable. Yeah, it's almost like 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 you almost get the old uh, you know I'll, I'll gladly uh, pay for a hamburger Tuesday for one Monday or whatever that old Popeye thing was, right? But anyways, it's all bull- yeah, exactly. all bullshit. We can have these five guys work for free, or we can pay this one really good guy to come in and tell a story. Yeah, you know. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, speaking of uh, a good promotion, you work with IWC right now. You're going to be up in Clearfield here in a couple of weeks for uh, what's now Cage Combat in Cre- Clearfield. So, uh, Ooh. yeah, yeah. Thankfully, you're not in the cage <laughs> for this one. You're uh, safely, if you can call it that, in a tag team match. Uh, you, of course, are one half of the tag team champions with your uh, bitter rival, Jimmy, Jimmy Vegas, down there. Thanks to that, the, I am my friend. The title belt is sitting right next to my eight-week-old puppy, and it looks gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Uh, but you'll be there uh, with your faces of change uh, compatriot here against uh, Jock Sampson and Bronco McBride. 
so I and I know Jockey. Who? Who? Bronco McBride. Who? Who? Do I have a match that really? Yeah. Okay. Jock, who's who's my partner? I think it's Darren De Niro. Is I that believe correct? it is De- Darren De Niro. Yes. Ooh, sounds <laughs> like a real real stomping of a match on a couple of country boys and and us. <laughs> Hey, you know, you're on Clearfield. You're on the middle of nowhere. The Clearfield County Fairgrounds. I, Clearfield. I don't even want to go to this show <laughs> since it is IWC. And since I, I do get paid extremely well, I will happily show up and put on a good show for the crowd. And uh, Jock Sampson had some, some harsh words for me. I think he cut a little promo on me and uh, my partner as well. And even Mr. Vegas. So... I'll be happy to see Mr. Sampson in the ring come come Clearfield. That'll be I, fun. I know Mr. Sampson's had some interesting words for our recent guest, Colin Delaney, and uh, and is recently coming off. I don't know, maybe he fell on his head when he fell off that uh, scaffolding a few weeks ago over in Ohio. I think he's knocked a few more screws loose than he already had. <laughs> because for me to be the most sane and normal person uh, with as much drinking as I have, have done in my past, there's something wrong. This guy beats his wife and cheats on his wife and beats his kids. I don't know what's wrong with you, dude. Oh, it's going to be a good show. A bunch of good stuff going on there. We'll talk about it uh, coming up in the coming weeks. But uh, if anybody wants to find out any more about what uh, Joe Rosa is doing, where can they find you online? I am at VIP Joe Rosa on the ta uh, as Mr. Jericho would say. Sorry, I just marked out for him. Uh, um, what else? I do have a, a wonderful Facebook I don't even know what that is, but it's pretty easy to find. Joe Rosa, IWC Wrestling. That's where it's at. And there is an Instagram with beautiful pictures of myself that is also VIP Joe Rosa. So please connect and follow me. Awesome. Go check him out. He's one of the great ones here with the IWC International Wrestling Cartel. And you can check out all of his stuff available over at PittsburghWrestling.com as well. Thanks for joining us. All uh, right, thanks again, Joe Rosa, for joining us. Uh, we'll see him. I'll see him in a couple of weeks there. Again, IWCWrestling.com. Check out about uh, clear combat in Clearfield. If you're in the middle of the state of PA, or actually in the new western, southwestern New York, you're not too far away from where we'll be. Um, so we're like up around Puxatawney, man. Like, like I, dro- I think I drove through Puxatawney there to get to this show. This is the most crazy remote show that we do. I love that there's a town named Punxsutawney. Right? That makes me happy. You don't know Punxsutawney, Phil? You never seen I'm, Groundhog Day? I have... Phil Murray? Uh, one of the finest? This is where my age gets exposed. All right, sir, please. This, this, this conversation happens way too often, This has nothing... Way. I know it does. We forget that you're... You damn millennials! Yeah, don't want to get... Don't want to get jobs in the offices and and pay for my retirement or whatever the argument is. Oh, well, I'm looking. I'm looking to see. Forget the wrestling. Forget the indie mayhem show. I'm going to find out Groundhog's Day on Netflix, and you're going to watch that stuff and report back to me in a week. But we'll do a Groundhog Day cast. That's Groundhog's fine. Day cast. It's going to happen. You know, we just take ten minutes and repeat it over and over again, and that's our podcast. Yeah, um, pretty much. <laughs> anyways, uh, so there was a lot of weather. Um, and uh unfortunate weather rwa got canceled i'm sad because this is now a month i've gone and this is how you feel when you have your month off i know but i'm usually yeah. stacked with the wrestling shows um where like a rare like a weekend off is a rarity for me and and, and I, it drives me insane i have to work on something um but uh but it, but i understand we're not, we're not the only ones that have this problem here in western pa right no i i heard of a lot of shutdowns uh, mm-hmm. across uh the united states even um, especially some, even some stuff in the South, which is, you know, you know, oh, how come that could it be in the South? It's pretty, not, it's not t- like earth shattering in Texas, but it's pretty damn cold here. Um, but also there are some places in, uh, in like, I think Tennessee had a couple places that got shut down, um, or, or just, just had canceled. I mean, even there were some events that had, um, uh, WCU and CZW had their events at the ECW arena this weekend. And, and the attendance wasn't ideal, I think. I think because of weather issues and stuff like that. Right. You know, it, it, it's a difficult thing. And it, and it was very unfortunate this weekend because th- this weather's – and this weather's affected us fucking uh, – uh, I'm sorry. I, I can curse on this show. Why am I apologizing? Um, uh, at Inspire Pro, we met uh, one of our big draws, Takaki Watanabe, had 
his flight canceled because of wind uh, the day before our show and couldn't make it. So it feels like this is a more occurrence that's happening in, the, in these past couple of weeks, and, and I don't like it that much. I, I'm not happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it's unfortunate. I mean, how raw, you know, it's been a pretty crazy winter. Raw, even as as famously a few uh, weeks ago, went down to this, right? Um, I, I, my joke uh, for when our debate got canceled was like, uh, "Hey, uh, let's get the announcers on Google Hangout. I'll broadcast from the studio here." Um, and we can get uh, as many of the wrestlers on Google Hangout and have some interviews about the events that's not yeah. happening and uh, play, say, oh, the Matt Hardy match from back in August uh, was a big deal. So we'll put that out free. And uh, except for the one wrestler, I mentioned Chris Taylor needs to walk to my place uh, to be in the studio from wherever the hell he is and uh, just to stare at a picture of the PA regional title holder uh, on my wall <laughs> and decide he wants to challenge for it. So that that's that was my solution. I can't say I got the idea from anywhere else. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but no, we had some fun with that, and that drew a sale up, or you know, just to kind of do something with it, right? Do something, make something of the weekend, right? Um, but eh, it's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. But uh, but that's a that's a risk. And and you, we were talking about uh, WWE. We said Tennessee. The the shows were canceled for Indies, mm-hmm. but. Yet we had a pay per view on Sunday. We did. So, uh, which I guess, well, the snowstorm didn't actually come through on Sunday. Sunday was fine here, at least. So, anyways, but still, that's going to be, you're in the city, you're going to be fine. Maybe that's why everybody was so tired and not talking at the pay per view. (laughs) Like, they were just like, that's that's really. He's but like, I, I, but I bought these tickets to a pay per view, and the NASCAR was today too. And I'm in Tennessee, so of course I watched that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm got, I'm getting into it. Maybe, maybe may, now that I think about it, that may be the case for the terrible crowd at Fastlane. That that really may be it. You that may makes have something sense. There. That makes sense, but that's for another show. Um, but other than that, people, like, other than uh, the cancellations, uh, things are getting crazy in Japan. I understand. <laughs> they are. Uh, I, I decided that. Is that, this? This kind of fits in the indie wrestling talk. Uh, it is technically, it's technically from a Japanese indie, I guess you could say. Still um, independent from WWE, so I think it counts. I mean, New Japan, we're kind of counting as this, right? That, and we've yeah, had those conversations true. on uh, here. But but there was some crazy stuff. If you if anyone out here follows Joshi Wrestling or Women's Wrestling from Japan, um, there's been some crazy stuff that happened this past weekend for the uh, Stardom promotion, uh, which is a pretty big. Pro- uh, Joshi uh, based promotion in Japan. Uh, they had one of the recent events at uh, Kroken Hall uh, in Tokyo uh, that was main evented by a singles match uh, for their uh, World of Stardom Championship uh, between uh, the champion Yoshiko and Ak Yasukawa, who is, uh, was basically a former champion, basically coming back to get her title back. Um, basically, it was a match that ended. And started and ended pretty much in a shoot fight uh, with Yoshiko uh, in the in the blonde hair. Uh, for those watching our video, uh, being the aggressor, um, very violent stuff. Uh, there is video of it online. Uh, I would watch it at your own discretion. Yeah, I, I don't even want to show these pictures that are on this article. To yeah, be that's the and, one that is. Oh, jeez, yeah, I just some, showed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't, my switcher there's is a, not working. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all good. But no, there's it's some pretty graphic stuff. Uh, uh, and also, if you know the story of these two wrestlers, especially uh, Act, who is the, the victim of this attack, uh, has had a lot of medical problems, uh, uh, you know, forcing her to keep in the wrestling. Uh, she famously comes out with an eye patch uh, because she uh, had surgical uh, surgery on her eye uh, and to help um, – I, I forgot what the disease is. I believe it's Graves' disease that she suffers from, which causes blindness, oh, wow. uh, which is one of the things that she had surgically repaired. Uh, and uh, right now there's not a lot of information uh, that is factual information. There's a lot of stuff that's just rumors right now about this uh, situation. Uh, I believe Stardom's having a press conference tomorrow uh, to talk about the situation. Um, but uh, – the reports are saying that uh, there's a good chance uh, she suffered a uh, broken nose, broken orbital bone, uh, and many are saying that uh, she, Yoshiko directly targeted uh, the uh, surgically repaired eye as well. Um, so very unfortunate situation, and it's being reported a lot um, all across uh, Japan as well as uh, uh, America. 
Um, very, very unfortunate situation happening uh, uh, for uh, Stardom and for jo and for Joshi Wrestling and for Akias Kawa as well. Um, it's it's so strange because I feel like you know we don't really see situations like that happening in America, no. uh, at, at least very much not on that level. No, absolutely um, not. Um, it, it's very interesting and and kind of kind of horrible when you think about it. But um, mm -hmm. hopefully things can be resolved and and you know things can go the way they 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 should go in this in this scenario yeah and this is one of those things like as as you know i mean as anyway you know and considering maybe being a wrestler as i did at one point um you know kind of looking at you know this kind of situation like this is the thing in the back of my head as a cautious individual that says man i really got to depend on that other person you know yeah. what i mean and you think about uh you know Joe Rose are just talking about like oh, some of the people backstage and this, that, and the other thing and weird political things. And I mean, there was a situation I've witnessed. Um, I've, I've witnessed a couple situations where it was just a bad the move was delivered or taken badly and it, it turns into something serious, you know, right. and it's been scary, um, you know, and then versus what if the person just wants to take liberties and, and do this, you know, right. um, for whatever the reason is. Um, like that is super scary and I don't know how psychologically that's handled, you know, as, as a pro wrestler, you know, and, and, and uh, there's a, a great conversation to ask, you know, something like that. Like, I don't think anybody ever does because right. you got to think, I mean, how many times have you sit there and you're watching like, uh, you know, watching NXT a few weeks ago and I'm watching with my wife and, and they do that. I, you, I'm sure you know the name of the move where they pretty much kind of do a driver on the back of their knee. And oh, Kevin Steen or Kevin Owens is Owens was doing, doing that. Now, but I saw yeah. a couple of people doing it, but um, and I don't think it was even that one. I think it was another match, maybe on raw or something did the same move. And Oh no, actually it was at VOW. They did that move and they're mm -hmm. like, Oh, he caught him with that one. And then it's like, you know, it just kind of looks like it hurts, but I know that they're protecting them with that, you know? Yeah, I know nothing about how that sort no, of works. No, but, and, but and... That's, that's the kind of move when you look at that and you're like, well, if they're not, like, it doesn't take much to lay you on your neck the wrong way on that, right? Yeah. And there's a lot of trust going on there. And um, and I was at a show this past weekend, actually, where uh, one of the finishing see, finishing moves was a, a pile driver. And... and knowingly like no like there's ways to take a pile driver correctly absolutely mm -hmm. i don't know those ways and once the move happened i i you know we so tensed up and i was we, like oh god we are not but in positions in our video and commentary status uh to know the physic the physics of pro wrestling and why it doesn't doesn't work i mean right. we, we have but, an idea and, and those competitors were completely fine we understand and how a bump works right but we and, don't and the move worked perfectly but right the thing is you look at that kind of move and you're like how can that be safe mm-hmm you know, and, and Canadian that, that, that destroyer, Canadian destroyer, every time. Yeah, especially as when as Inspire show, I saw someone do a hurricanrana on someone else from the top turnbuckle to the floor on top of three guys. Because I mean, I, for me, when I see a move like that, I'm like, how does he protect himself? How does he not kill the other guy when they do like the double stomp? And I understand it's a uh, there's something they do. <laughs> yeah, there's a you science know. to it. Yeah, there's but the thing to think you have to how good you have to be at that. To make sure that it does it, everything goes perfectly. Basically, it comes down to I was very, I was too clumsy to be a pro wrestler, yes. <laughs> and yes. I wouldn't want to trust somebody else with my clumsiness. Um, but on top of other things, like not like enjoying pizza too much. Um, <laughs> let's be honest here. That's why we have the sponsors. That's, that's, that we do. that's, that's, that's the same reason I'm not in it. Exactly. I exactly. I mean, some of us were just not built for something like this, right? Or chose not to build ourselves to something like this so yeah. but we have other options that we get to appreciate and, and and such um there's a lot of options out there but uh but no it's, it's very intriguing um and uh we don't i'm surprised and maybe they just don't get out there but i'm surprised we don't hear about a lot of this happening in indies in general especially considering the well, variety of personalities that are out there in indie wrestling that's true i i do think there's an underbelly to it all uh, that I don't think a lot of fans always realize of how maybe not the in, the injuries that are accrued, but sometimes like people working through injuries and stuff like that. Right. Uh, because it's it's you know I, I feel like if you, 
you talk to an indie wrestler about some of the stuff they've worked through and you're like, why, why would you in your head? Why would you do that? You're a crazy person. Right. Like, and then, you know, but it's, it's something I would never understand. I don't think I, I have had, you know, uh, seen a guy. I've, I've said this to, to one guy where I saw what he did in the ring that night. And, and he was asking me how it went. And I'm like, dude, you, no way you get paid enough to do what you just did out there. Yeah. I mean, that's, it, it, you know, it's, it's indie wrestling. It's what it is. And, and there's a different driving force that, that goes into that, you know, um, but, and the, we appreciate that, you know what I mean? As fans, oh, yeah. you know, we have the utmost appreciation of that kind of thing. So, um, but now uh, it's, it's, we're, we're definitely did living, wrapping our heads around aspects of the business and what happens in there that we do not understand. It's oh a, yeah. It's a yeah. kind of magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a weird, weird magic. It is. It yeah. is. Um, which then extends to my, you know, I, I, you know, if you if you listen to a lot of, um, if you listen to Mark Maron's podcast, if you listen to a lot of uh, nerdist stuff, and realize for somebody to become an entertainer, for somebody to become a comedian, especially, there has to be a certain amount of, you know, for lack of a better term, damage. Does that seem fair? Right. If you want to be a comedian, you know. You know, you, you want to do something different. You don't want to, or maybe there's something that affected your life in that, in that way. And I think pro wrestling is kind of a similar way. Oh, absolutely. It, it, Normal people don't decide to put their, their, their bodies through what it's equivalent of multiple car wrecks. In, no, absolutely in a night, not. There's gotta know, be some, there's, for, always, there's something that goes into it. For fun, for, you know, whatever your aspirations are as a pro wrestler, you know, um, I, I think a lot of the case, the same pe- the same people don't last really that long. <laughs> so there you go. Are you crazy enough to keep going? But there's but the, the, this turns into a more existential ex- existential uh, thing too. Is the people that are successful in anything have a certain amount of insanity? Oh the, yeah. The people that yeah. decide they want to be an entrepreneur versus just sitting at a desk job and t- and doing that where it's secure have a certain level of insanity. You know to push through that thing to become successful. And I think that's what happens with wrestlers too. I mean, with wrestlers, one, they have to figure out what they're doing. They have to figure out how to be good at what they're doing and recognize whether they are or aren't and, and, and improve. And, and like, uh, you know, Joe tonight talking about, you know, I went to this OVW to learn from the people that know how to teach. Right. Right. The people that know the people that work that style, the people that, that have been there. Right. Um, and and uh, hoping to push that onto these these new kids, right? Um, but you know, on top of that, you know, deciding I'm going to keep doing this even after ten years, and I'm not in WWE yet. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep getting in the car. I'm going to keep doing. I'm going to keep, you know, doing the hotels. Going to be doing the crap shows. Get get all over. But hope get better shows as you go. Uh, is the idea, you know, and connecting with more people, learning from more people. Um, you know, I mean, we, I think both of us know guys that have been around for got to be near 10 years, if yeah. not longer. And some of them are just now getting their opportunity, getting on TV. How long has Kevin Owens and uh, uh, Sami Zayn been around? God, for you yeah, know. forever. Right, so it's like the early two thousands, yeah, then that's and that's why it's a lot. That's time. really hard to swallow for a lot of these guys, and they talk about this too. It's hard to swallow for a lot of these guys to be like, "I've been doing this for ten years. What do you mean you got to teach me from scratch?" Mm-hmm. You know, the Seth Rollins issue when they talked about on destruction of the shield. You know, um, but again, you know, kind of learning for what we do on this level, right? When you're WWE, and they're allowed to, they kind of make the rules. If you want the job, you <laughs> gotta gotta do their version of the job, right? Uh, but you have to get through that, and it takes a certain mentality, or you know, say a lack of sanity, or a lack of—I don't want to say reason. I don't. I don't mean to say this in a demeaning way. Um, you know, I feel like you know anybody decides I'm not going to do the day job thing and and do do this outside the box thing, which is prone to failure. Um, you know, it, it, it takes a certain special kind of mindset and not a lot of people can do it, especially in wrestling, mm-hmm. even more. So I think, I think wrestling is more challenging than anything I've ever tried. So definitely, but anyways, there's you, there's <laughs> Eamon on the mic. He's all right. He's safe. Out there. I, I'm, I'm perfectly safe from injury on the microphone and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> you would think that, right? You, you no, would I, think that. I, I, I've seen some close yeah, calls at the commentary booth. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, I, I, I hope to keep it that way. I hope to go mostly unscathed my entire career. But <laughs> I mean, Joe Dombrowski did have a wrestling match that involved pulling a, a sandwich out of his pocket. <laughs> oh, brother. What's your, I, what's your, I can only dream. I can only dream of him. Plus, your ring announcer gets uh, harassed by Lance Hoyt on a regular he basis. Does. So, and, I mean, that's a thing that happens. Um, hey, Pedro's get, got hit in the head with a chair a couple of times at VOW. Jesus Christ. As a ring announcer. So, I'm just saying, you know, it happens. Maybe, the ring, maybe it's the ring I'm glad that I'll, I'll you know, give ring announcing duties to whoever. They're at least closer into the line of fire. Uh, uh, inside the actual ring. So. Chess Flexor? Ch- Chess Flexor. I remember my first, uh, you know, noticing him was when he was doing the music for IWC and had the crap slapped out of him by John McChesney the first time he turned heel. Jeez. Yeah. Took okay. it full on. Be nicer to, to uh, officials. Not officials, but... Uh, <laughs> ah, he's yeah. a trainee. You're. Allowed, I think I'm allowed to slap him around. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the contract on that one. We'll have to look into that. We'll yeah. look into that. <laughs> but anyways, we're just having fun. Just having fun. Anyways, uh, I like the trainees. This, this round's all right. They're nice guys. They're yeah. nice guys. And you never know. They they could be on TNA someday. <laughs> 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 they could be they could be getting squashed by Rhino on NXT any day. You know. Oh, here's you know, Guys that I've seen, you know, putting the ring together several years ago. That's uh, uh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I talked. Okay. I talked. Yeah, I did. I did do a side thing. I should mention here. We uh, Mayhem Minute. We've been doing. Uh, I've been doing uh, most mornings and I did have a uh, kind of a takeover NXT takeover um, kind of post show guy thing mm-hmm. about the local guys and that local feel and that feeling that comes up when, you know, you've watched somebody, you know, at, you know, start putting the ring together and you watch them as they figured it out on, you know, sitting in the front row or whatever it is on your local indie. And now they're on NXT or maybe they're Daniel Bryan that you saw as Eamon and I did that one time. Yeah. Um, you know, up in Cleveland when we threw neckties in the ring. Oh, also, can I note something about that as well? That kind of ties into that. Hmm. Uh, there was actually some sad news that came from the indie wrestling world this weekend as well. Was that um, uh, it was announced that the AIW wrestling event uh, in Cleveland this weekend was that uh, Tim Dons, hmm. uh, who was actually the guy that wrestled Brian Danielson on that show, yeah, um, uh, uh, you know, former Chikara star, uh, he was the AIW champion at the time. Uh, uh, Sally what? announced that he has. Uh, to take time away from the ring, uh, uh, he has a. Uh, the, apparently, he went to a, a, a doctor and, and they found a tumor on his kidney. Oh, jeez. Uh, so yeah, so very very um, hard stuff, uh, and and he was getting a lot of bookings, you know, in some of the bigger promotions of the Indies. So very oh. sad stuff from there, and, and definitely want to wish him the best, and and hopefully he can uh, overcome this uh, and 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 make it back in the ring one day. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people on Twitter share their support. Even uh, Mick Foley uh, tweeted about uh, Tim Dons. Uh, so that's, you know, obviously got to be uh, pretty cool stuff. So um, yeah, so just yeah, just want to send best wishes to him and, and hopefully he can get through this. Certainly, and definitely, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you see a lot of great support for you know situations like that, you know. Um, but yeah, but best to him. I know he's been in the area, of course, uh, as uh, part of VOW. Uh, in uh, not recently, recently, but I know in the in the past year, I think he's been a part of it. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I hope I hope I'm the best on on that. Certainly, definitely. So, all right, uh, let's take a look at uh, any indies coming up this weekend. We've been we've been this at this forever. Weekend, I'm trying to think uh, if there's any. We big can play. Ones, we so. can play the Nate Stein email game. Uh, let's play the Nate Stein email game. Let's play like the Nate game. Stein. And actually, I think I've heard of these guys. Uh, this is happening. Oh, this is actually the Wednesday. Oh, you can't do a Wednesday night show. They, people, nobody's <laughs> going to hear this. Tomorrow. Tomorrow well, here's one. Here's one people have heard of before. How about Pro Wrestling Gorilla is doing something? Hey, uh, I've never heard of them. I don't know what that is. I I have no idea. Uh, they're doing something February 27th. That's this Friday in Reseda, uh, Reseda California, which I think uh, our friend Alex Cars is nearby to that. I know he talks about them a good bit. Uh, from out of nowhere. <laughs> I get it. Uh, a lot of good stuff going on there. Roderick Strong versus Trevor Lee. Uh, it was a Young Bucks are going to be part of that card. Uh, Ethan, Ethan Page and uh, Josh Alexander are taking them on a tag team match. Ricochet, Matt Seidel, Chris Hero, Drew Gulak, uh, Tomosa Champa, and uh, and so much ACH. Your buddy. Yep. 
yes, buddy indeed. ACH. Uh, so uh, you can check that out. Uh, ProWrestlingGorilla.com for details. And you know it's going to be on DVD there. And they have so much other stuff. That's the interesting West Coast. That was the, always the conversation when, when somebody's like, hey, you should move to San Francisco. I'm like, I don't know any wrestling in San Francisco, to be honest. <laughs> and that's like a five hour drive to get around the LA area for PWR or PR, PWG. So I don't think that's happening. Um, that's like me going to Philly every weekend. Uh, right, let's yeah. see what we got here. We got one. also, uh, go ahead. We can also talk about it's not this coming weekend, but uh, definitely upcoming very soon in March. Uh, Ring of Honor did announce that Samoa Joe has signed for a couple dates for Ring of Honor uh, uh, starting in March. Uh, so, uh, you know, definitely nice. it seems yes. like he's going to be making that run uh, uh, in the independence soon. Uh, so very cool to see. Uh, more information on that, you can check out ROHwrestling.com. And I'm sure they'll be announcing uh, opponents and, and, and stuff like that for Joe soon. So Nice. And uh, here's an interesting looking one. This is on the randomizer in the Nate Stein emails. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should email back. He's like, thanks. We're randomly picking stuff to plug on our show. Uh, also, Friday, February 27th in Jamaica, New York. I love um, that so I'm much. I'm not going to make a Matt, uh, Matt, uh, Mike Adamley reference on that one. For All Mankind is happening out there with Mick Foley's a part of this. Look at that's, that. That's fitting. Also, Crimson, which I think the real name is Tommy Mercer. He's been with the yeah. IWC in the past before. He's going to be part of this. And you can check it out. Facebook.com slash House of Glory Wrestling School. Oh, okay. Uh, so go check that out. And also, this weekend in the Pittsburgh area, my backyard, Pro Wrestling Express. You can check them out. ProWrestlingExpress.com. Long, 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 long time guys around here. We talked about them in the past. They're having a show February Fury, uh, February 28th here in McKeesport in the outskirts of Pittsburgh. Lots of stuff going on there. If you want to check out what they're doing, they do have their TV shows on uh, online. Why did they have a notice about Global Force Wrestling's New Japan? That is weird. Anyways, <laughs> but you can check it out. ProWrestlingExpress.com. So friends of the show on those shows as well it might see some familiar names so um anything else Tell that's all friends. i can think of that's going on in, in the indie world at least for, but, for now there's as, always something but. as usual please anybody uh go just look up indie wrestling your area uh, there's some directory i can't remember where all the directories are we were looking at some of them before um <laughs> but just look up indie wrestling your area western pa you know uh, rhode island there's something around there i gotta stop going to this picture of this chick that got messed up in japan <laughs> oh, I went, ah, 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 that, I feel that, bad. That's nightmare fuel, right? Oh, there. geez. Um, it's about as much nightmare fuel as Papa Shango throwing up Ultimate Warrior, right? Callback. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, on that note, oh, oh. Inspire Pro Wrestling. Go check out yes. inspireprowrestling.com, pro, uh, pittsburghwrestling.com, or indiawrestling.us to see what we're doing up here. Just put the final touches on. Friend of the show, uh, we have, you know, we we should have him on. We have not had him on the Indie Mayhem show. We've had him on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Gregory Iron. I love that Gregory Iron on. Gregory Iron. CM Punk ab uh, uh, abused, no, uh, approved. Uh, Gregory Iron. Uh, just put the finishing touches on his best of DVD for Prime Wrestling. It's going to be a two-disc set. Has him taken on Johnny Gargano, one of his early feuds with that. There's actually a pretty good amount of that feud on there. Um, of course, Zach Gowan, his match against Zach Gowan. Zach Gowan as a heel, guys. It was pretty <laughs> incredible. Um, and I, I and, and really proud to be uh, on my part of that angle um, uh, on the camera side. I uh, got to see, got to be around for a lot of the buildup, and um, and of course there for the, the the match at Resolution at ringside uh, filming. Also on that card, friends of the show, Gory and Facade in a casket match. Yes, um, that that opened the show. I want to point out too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what else is going on? Um, I'd say I'm just I'm thrown off because I should be releasing, releasing a DVD this week for RWA, and I'm sad that I'm not. I really, I'm just thrown <laughs> off so much here. So, uh, but of course, you can check out everything out wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We got so many things. I'm watching 30 days of WrestleMania. You are. We'll see if we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three in. I'm three in so far. I have 30. Three days left, three, three, 32 by the time we're ending this show here. Uh, so go check that wrestlingmayhemshow.com, a mayhem minute, my commentary daily. 
about what's going on in pro wrestling and so much more. Follow us on Wrestling Mayhem Show, Facebook, Google Plus, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. And of course, we're live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us in the chat room as Wheels has. ROH has a pay per view this weekend. They That's do cool. have pay per view this so weekend. So go, uh, I don't, I'm a cord cutter. I don't get pay per views. So uh, <laughs> I'm independent of cable. There you go. <laughs> Eamon, anything going on? Battle, I think that's it. Battle Wars is out for Inspire Pro. Battle Wars is out for Inspire Pro. Uh, we got some uh, cool stuff coming down the pipe. March 22nd is our next show, uh, and we'll be releasing more match uh, information stuff uh, to come. So definitely oh. keep an eye out for that. Oh, this is a good point. We were talking about earlier. This was pointed out in the chat room. Sound guys are not safe from Jock Sampson, and my video guys were not safe from Jock Sampson. Well, no one's really safe from Jock Sampson. Let's be. <laughs> if you're in the state, you should be wearing. So yes. look out, Joe Rosa. Anyways, uh, thanks again to him at VIP Joe Rosa, and uh, check out everything IWCWrestling.com for info on how to join the wrestling school if you're into that as well, if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, so until next time, for Amen at Amen 2 please, at Sorgatron, go support some indie wrestling. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.